All right, today we're going to do one of my favorite uh, dry dropper uh, indicator flies. It's a Goddard style caddis. Uh, works great. It's just a super buoyant fly, so it works uh, works great as a uh, indicator fly for a dropper rig. It's a pretty durable fly, so bluegill bass, a lot of other types of fish can chew on it for a good long time and not uh, not damage it. Today we're going to be doing it on a size 10 fire hole 419 hook. We're going to be using brown Vivas thread and I've already anchored the thread onto the hook and we've made just a little bit of a bump back here at the back of the hook. I haven't put any thread on the shank of the hook. We've anchored it at the back and just made that little bit of a bump. And what that bump is going to do is when we pack our, our deer hair, and you're going to see that coming up here, when we pack our deer hair that's going to give it something to back up against so it doesn't try to slide down the bend of the hook. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of deer hair here and we're going to cut it off the hide. Kind of keep that as even as we can. Not a big chunk, no more than maybe a pencil's width. On this size hook, less than a pencil's width. In fact, this might be a little bit much, but we'll see how it works. And we're going to take and we're going to pull all of the under fur out of that that we possibly can. And we don't need to even this hair because we don't care about the tips. The butt sections are what we're going to use. So we're going to trim the butt sections off even. And then we're going to go down here just about a finger's width. And we're going to trim off the tips. So that we just have a little clump of butt section here. But, and that is too much now that I'm looking at it. So we're going to take a little bit of that out. And we're just going to lay that on the hook. And we're going to make a couple of soft wraps with the, with the thread just to make sure that we've got it. And then we're going to start pulling down and you're going to see how that hair flares. And it's going to flare and it's going to spin as we tie it on the hook. We want that to, we're going to pull that nice and tight so that, that hair spins. And on this first wrap some of that's going to foul in the bend of the hook so we're just going to get in here with our bodkin and pick all that out so that everything's nice and even. Keeping the tension on the thread. We're just going to pull that down and then we're going to take our fingers and we're going to peel this hair back and we're going to get a couple of wraps of thread on the shank of the hook ahead of it. Take our thumbs, our thumb and our forefinger and our thumb back here and we're just going to pack that hair as tight as we can get it to pack. Be very careful doing this so that you don't slip off and impale yourself on the hook. Notice I'm on each side of the hook here so that if I do slip I'm going to slip this way and away from the point of the hook. If you try to do it this way and you slip you're going to impale yourself on your hook. So once we get that uh, packed back there we're going to take and we're going to grab another clump of hair. Now that we're clear of the bend of the hook, this one can be a little bit bigger clump. We're gonna, again, pick as much of that under hair out of there as we can. The more under hair you get out, the cleaner that hair is going to spin and the easier this fly is going to be to do. So Once we get that done, we're going to go in again. We're going to trim off the points of that hair, the tips of that hair, so that we have another clump of, of butt sections there and then we're just going to go in and we're going to make sure we don't catch any of the hairs out of that last clump and we're just going to do that same process again. We're going to tighten that down, let that hair flare and then just let it spin onto the hook and we're just going to slowly ease it back there against that last clump. Try not to move your vise. Hopefully we're still in the camera shot. And then we're just going to take and we're going to work that back against that previous clump. And as soon as we do, we're going to get another couple of wraps on the shank of the hook. Push that back to hold our tension while we get everything packed there. A couple more. Then we're going to grab a third clump of that hair. Usually doesn't take more than about three clumps to get where we need to go. We're only going up to about two-thirds of the way up the hook. 
get all of that hair out of there that we can, all that under fur. Trim those tips off again so that we've got another clump here. Try to get that as much in the center as we can. A couple of soft wraps around. Cinch that down good and tight. Let it spin. And I think we're going to be able to make this clump look work, but it looked like we got a little bit of the last one spun in. Oh yeah, there we go. It's going to work. And so now we got a nice little mop going there. I'm going to peel that back, get a couple of wraps on there, pack that back against itself, and there you see we're just about two thirds of the way up the hook. We do got room for just a little bit more hair. So we're just going to take a very small clump. In this case, maybe about a third of the size of what we did before. Trim that off real quick. Get all of these hairs peeled back because it's real important that we don't catch those in this clump. Couple of wraps. Pull it tight. Spin that on there. And that's going to be about where we want it to be once we get everything packed that pack down good and tight you don't want to pull a nice steady pressure you don't want to pull real hard because you don't want to pop your thread but you want a nice steady pressure on that now once we get that on there we've got this nice little mop that we're gonna to have to trim and when we trim it we don't want to cut the thread so we're just gonna go ahead and tie off on this because if you cut that thread and you release that tension, everything goes poof. So we're just going to tie off with a real quick whip finish. Set that back against there. And that way we're going to have our tension on there so that we don't have to worry about this getting away from us. We can go ahead and clip that thread now. And then we'll start the process of uh, trimming that hair. Okay, so now that we've got this clump here, we're going to trim the hair and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll that fly over in the hook so that we've got the point of the hook sticking out and we're going to take our scissors you could do this with a razor blade if you wanted most people will tell you I can't be trusted with something that sharp so I'm going to use scissors and we're going to just go in just a little over the top of the shank of the hook and we're just going to trim down through here Get ourselves and then get a nice flat spot trimmed out on that hair as close to the shank of the hook as we can get we don't if you're if you're using scissors that's not going to be a problem if you packed it in there good and tight you're not going to be able to get that close to the shank of the hook with a razor blade you got to be careful that you don't get down so close to the shank that you trim your thread and now caddises have a tapered body they're going to be narrow at the front and they're going to taper back so when we trim the rest of this body we're going to start close to the shank but when the, then we're going to let our scissors angle out so that we're trimming kind of a triangle shape. And we're just going to go around the hook following that line that we originally cut until we get around to the other side. And we should have, when we're done, we should have a nice little angled caddis body here. Do a little fine tune in here. And if you want to, you can tease those fibers back and even up the back here. And you got a nice, even little body there. Once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and we're going to reattach our thread. Trim that off. Looks like we got a couple stray hairs there we can trim up. Get those out of there. We're going to grab a hackle. Usually something 
in a color to match the hair you're using. We're going to tie that hackle in. We're going to tie that hackle stem in and we're going to go back into the hair just a little bit. Make sure we catch that uh, tie-in point. And then we're going to advance the thread up close to the eye of the hook. And we're just going to start wrapping that hackle in touching wraps up to the eye of the hook. We want those wraps to be as close together as we can get them because we want a nice bushy hackle here. Then we're going to tie off that hackle. Trim that out. Pull those fibers back and make ourselves a little bit of a head here. And then we're going to get our whip finish tool. We figure out where we put our whip finish tool. There it is. We are just going to throw a quick whip finish on that. About a three or four turn whip finish. We've gone to a lot of effort here. We don't want this to come apart, so we're going to throw a second one on. Looks like we can get rid of a couple of uh, stray hairs there. Trim our thread. And there you've got your Goddard style caddis ready to go. Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim on the Fly. Hope you enjoyed the Goddard caddis video. It's one of my favorite flies. It's a fun fly to tie. It's a fun fly to fish. It's going to figure prominently in a lot of my spring and summer fishing. So it'll probably be in a lot of the videos coming up too. So uh, be sure and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Until then, see you in the next one. Tight lines.